You want to scare an economist, a capitalist, or virtually anyone invested in our current economy? Show them a statistic like this. China's population, now around 1.4 billion, is likely to drop to just about half a billion in 2100. Now, this is an article from the Wall Street Journal that I will jump into, as well as a source, which is another article from the journal. But this is going to be world shaping what is about to happen in China. And I understand that you might say, okay, 2100, that's 75 years from now. I'm not going to be around to worry about that. But this is happening right now. So let's dive into it. This first article, China is pressing women to have more babies, many are saying no, is talking about really cultural changes in China that are affecting that is affecting their birth rate. Now, this chart, which is really the majority of the article, kind of explains what's happened in China over the last 70 years. This right here is the Great Famine. This is kind of an important milestone in China. Their population took a really bad hit. They were able to recover from it. And then they have their famous one child policy for about a 35 year period from 1980 to 2015, where effectively you were not allowed to have more than one kid. There were forced abortions, there was massive fines, and this was a big deal. And when they turned it off, seeing these demographic problems that they were going to have happen, they expected a spike in birth rates, which would allow their, their population to continue to grow, which we'll talk about why that's important in a minute. But what happened is the exact opposite, is effectively a cultural rebellion where the government starts kind of uh, implying that women should be having more children, and the exact opposite happens. They start having less and less. For example, here, this is actually from the source article from a year ago. This shows what China's population was doing from 1950 to 2020. And look at the number of births, right? Number of births largely stagnant, plummeting right now. So from here to here, China's population tripled, and yet their birth stayed largely constant through it. And now it is, you know, plummeting. And this will, of course, not go to zero or anything dramatic like this. This will eventually level off. And certainly cultural things can change here in the future. But if you want to look at project, this is projections of Chinese population and the UN, which has an incredible track record of uh, predicting population growth, very, very accurate, is the most optimistic, saying that by 2100, there'll be, you know, effectively 0 0.75, 0 0.8 billion people in China, down from one and a half billion, 1.4 billion. This is a population collapse that I, we have never seen in the developed world. I, you know, where I got the name of this was from a fantastic podcast. Dan Carlin, Hardcore History is one of the best you know, educational entertainment things in the world. Uh, this is a very good one on effectively the bubonic plague and what happens in Europe during the second plague, which you know, wipes out 50%, in some cases, 80, 90% of cities, you know, kind of refers to these cities effectively being nuked from existence. Uh, by the plague. And what happens to a society when it loses this much of its population? Certainly here in the U.S., especially if you're like me from kind of a rural area or really anywhere, we've seen this all over the East Coast as well, um, where I grew up, is, you know, areas, small towns or whatnot that maybe manufacturing left and, and the population just evaporated and what happened to the economic, those economic centers and, and kind of the damage done to the area and, and how people just leave. Imagine that, but happening on a national scale, right? Like every two out of every three homes in China being empty, right? Entire cities like New York City, the population are decreasing to 30% of what it was or 35%, right? It is nuts. And here are the Chinese. His, so this is the UN website for Chinese population, right? This was the year that China, it was 2023, it was the first year that China's population was lower than it was the year before. This is not something we have to worry about in the future. This is happening right now. So this, these uh, red lines are effectively the standard deviations from, from this solid red line here that is predicting what Chinese population is going to do. If you want to look at the U.S., this is the U.S. where, you know, we haven't had such cult strong handed cultural things around birth rates. And although we are leveling out, we don't expect to see a plummet like this, which is which is a very big deal. Uh, interesting enough, here is Europe. 
but this is misleading. Whenever you look at a chart, you really have to uh, understand what the axis is. For example, this is 750 million. This is like 600 million. So 150 over 600 is about a 25% drop over the next 2100. Whereas China, we're going from 1.4 down to like in somewhere here, kind of 0.75. This is a 50% drop. So this is uh, quite a bit more aggressive. If you're curious, Africa is really the only place in the world where we continue to expect population to grow dramatically. But even in the future, this is going to level off. I will link a video at the end which talks about kind of fertility rates all around the world and how really this is a problem uh, all over the place. Of course, the largest country in the world now, India, looks a little bit more like the U.S. Um, where they're going to start leveling off here in about 30 years. Uh, and then probably will will start to kind of draw down. But again, they don't have these kind of cultural influences that have really been affecting fertility rates. So, you know, this, I, I think the takeaway here, other than just this kind of really fascinating thing, is that this, I truly believe, is going to be the biggest driver of the whatever the economy looks like in 20 to 30 years, which most of us are going to be around for, this is going to be the number one driver, which is where are the population centers not plummeting like China? For example, China has very little uh, immigration to it, where un unlike U the US and Europe, effectively immigration can, can uh, help us with our, with our population problem. There may be people out there that think, I don't want as many people in the US or Europe or whatever that is, uh, and, you know, a lower population is better. From an economic standpoint, that is undeniably not better, right? I've done a number of videos about how we're kind of in this Goldilocks zone of not only is world population still going up, but the percentage of the world that is a developed consumer is increasing. So not only is population going up, but the amount of them that are buying things is going up, which is creating an economic Goldilocks zone, but that that is going to be coming to an end. And the, the, you know, kind of winning economies are going to be places that can still maintain, just maintain a population, let alone not be losing 65% of their population. So if you're interested in that, I, you know, I've done a lot of uh, videos on this kind of fertility rate stuff in the economy. This video in particular, I will go through all of that. Otherwise, I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll talk to you soon.